Good evening. You're listening to WRSU FM in New Brunswick. My name is Mark Greenberg. I'm the general manager of the station, and I'll be your host for this evening's program. And I'd like to tell you that you're currently listening to New Jersey's newest radio station. It is owned and operated by the students of Rutgers University and is committed to serving its students and the greater Central Jersey community. Tonight, as we here begin a new chapter in this station's broadcast history, we cannot help but recall the people who have worked here in the 26 years of the station's existence and recognize their contributions towards the effort of bringing this radio station to the air. Many people have volunteered a great deal of their own time, so this evening could be a reality, and for this we would like to publicly thank them. The class of 1918, who provided us with some sorely needed funds, must be mentioned tonight, as well as the students of Rutgers and Douglas Colleges, who have provided us with funds since the station's inception. Above all, however, I must pay special attention at this time to our chief engineer, Mr. Richard Harvey, who, it seems, put this station together nearly single-handedly. Of course, gratitude to the university's administration is also in order, for it was through the cooperation of the Board of Governors that our application was sponsored and student autonomy guaranteed. For our inaugural program this evening, we've decided to give you a brief introduction to the purpose, direction, and programming of WRSU-FM. And so that I wouldn't start talking about things too much, we've gathered the station managers here so they can give you a brief look at the kind of material which will be offered throughout our broadcast days. As we talk this evening, we will be interspacing our conversation with the different types of music you'll hear on WRSU-FM, from rock to Bach. You'll also notice that unlike most other radio stations, you will not hear any commercial announcements, which alleviates any obligation to sponsors only an obligation to keep our air signal filled with programming for your benefit. And to accomplish such an end, we will periodically ask you for your reactions and recommendations. So, this is where we are tonight, and what it all heralds. I'd really like to say something like, it's a small step for man, but somehow that doesn't seem altogether appropriate. So all I can say is sit back and relax, listen and enjoy. Uh, we're going to pause in a little while for some music, and after we return, We'll be back with the station managers who are here tonight, Bob Berman, who's the program director, Ron Hope, who is our news director, and Anthony Bizanko, who is our educational programs director. So we're going to break for some music, and once again, I bid you welcome.
Sail on, silver girl. Sail on.
Just another dreamer dreaming about every man. Okay, we heard uh, something uh, rather old and then something new. We heard Simon and Garfunkel, Bridge Over Troubled Waters, their classic cut, and then something new from a gentleman named Jackson Brown, 
and two things called Sing My Songs to Me and For Every Man. It's 16 minutes after 6 o'clock. If you've just tuned in, you are listening to the inaugural broadcast of WRSU-FM, the uh, Rutgers University radio station, and we have with us tonight, and uh, we're very pleased that he could stop by, Dr. Edward J. Blaustein, who is the president of Rutgers University, and uh, we're just very glad you could come up this evening and share this event with us. Delighted to be here with you, Mark. I just want to take a minute, if you have one, to congratulate right you, the officers of WRSU, and all of the students who have worked so hard over, I know, a long period of time to bring this to fruition. I think it's an extraordinary job on the part of students to have accomplished what you've accomplished in this period of time. You're doing a great service, I think, to the people of the state of New Jersey and to the university. And I, as president of the university, just want to congratulate you. Well, thank you very much. I hope uh, this radio station will prove to be a, an asset to uh, not only Rutgers University, but to the central New Jersey area. And we have had reports already tonight that uh, you know we are being received about 30 miles from New Brunswick down in the uh, Middletown, New Jersey area. So uh, it looks like our signal is uh, very strong, and probably even a little stronger than we had expected. Um, Tonight we're just going to be doing very general things until around 8 o'clock this evening. And at 8 o'clock we will begin our normal uh, broadcast day. So we will start with musical programming at that time. At 7 o'clock p.m., which is in about 40 minutes from now, we will be having a, a wrap-up of uh, the day's events in news. And we will be discussing that in a little greater detail later on in the broadcast. But um, considering that this radio station is very closely aligned with uh, Rutgers University, and uh, it's really an inherent relationship. Uh, this radio station does plan to do a, a great deal of programming that emanates from Rutgers University. Mr. Nat Schuhalter, who is director of the Bureau of Educational Radio and Television, uh, has been producing a great many shows which have been aired on the radio. And now, finally, uh, he's got a Rutgers University radio station to air Rutgers University programs. And we're very happy about that. Uh, the first thing we thought we'd do tonight is describe uh, with Mr. Berman and uh, the other people that we have up here what our a normal day's broadcast schedule will look like. And uh, it will commence at 6.30 in the morning and go until 2 the following morning, which is a rather lengthy day, and we do have a lot of things uh, in store. So do you want to get started with that, or do you have anything else in particular you would like to discuss with our audience? No, not at this time. <laughs> um, looking at the programming... Uh, we see a, a combination of uh, entertainment and uh, informational and educational programs that we feel uh, serves our audience in, in every way possible, both in the entertainment sense and in the informational and educational sense. Uh, the morning uh, looks like uh, some rock music coming on at 6.30 in the morning and going till 9 a.m. with uh, uh, a wake-up type show that will have uh, a combination of different styles of rock and folk music, etc. From 9 to 10 a.m., we do uh, an hour of special programming, which uh, Anthony Bizanko, our educational educational program director, That's it. I got it right, we'll look at it a little bit later on. From 10 a.m. to noon, we again go back to rock music and uh, look at sounds that uh, came out some years ago or sounds that are coming out now. There's a, there's a funny thing about oldies. I have no idea why it happens, but uh, sounds music that came out only a year or two ago is now classified as oldies. But we won't be strictly looking at that. Instead, uh, mixing it, I think, in a very uh, entertaining and very pleasing manner to the audience, our rock music. From 12 to 12.15, we've got our first big newscast of the day, a, a midday report, which Ron Hope, news director, will look at later. From 12.15 to 3 o'clock, we have what I think Doc, Dr. Blastin told me he was going to listen to quite a bit. And in fact, he kind of said, uh, you ought to play some more of this kind of great music, and that's classical. <laughs> no, I did uh, say I'd love to hear the classical music, but my wife and I, who lived in Bennington, Vermont, for a long period of time, spent most of our radio time on one station run by Five College Radio Station, it was called, out of Amherst that combined some great rock music, which I also enjoy, with great classical music. It was a good balance of the two, and we enjoyed both. So I'll, I'll listen to both. If you'll let me. <laughs> I'll let you. You can do it. It's OK. So five days a week, from 12.15 uh, to 3 p.m., we'll have classical music. And the other two days, it looks like we'll have Broadway and movie soundtracks and show tunes, et cetera. 
which we found a great deal of our audience is very interested in. Uh, three to five, from 3 p.m. to 5 p.m., we have jazz five days a week, with uh, two, days, two days a week being devoted to folk programming, including some live concerts, if, if we can do it right from our studios. Uh, 5 to 5.15 is another extended newscast. 5.15 to 8 p.m. is the uh, Soul Patrol, which will look at the black community in a cultural and educational sense, information, trying to give it uh, a full panorama of, of what's happening around the state and, and around the nation in that area. Uh, I should say that was till 7.30. From 7.30 to 8.30 is again uh, special programming, and these will be some really special special programming, which as I mentioned before, Mr. Zanko will look at a little later. 8.30 to 10.30, we come back with rock, which uh, can turn some people off just saying rock music, but it's really, again, a combination of all kinds, including some classical. In fact, Charlie, who's on tonight from 8 o'clock till 10.45, pulled out some classical cuts that he'll be throwing in in, in between the uh, rock and the folk and the jazz. It's, it, it do, you have any requests on, do you have any requests on, say, people who want to hear a certain piece of rock or a certain style of rock, can they write in and request? That or, uh, or we have classical phone numbers. Music? Or right. We have My phone wife's numbers a great opera call. buff. Well, uh, any phone Just call from your wife would be taken <laughs> with <laughs> smiles. Oh, smiles. Or from anybody else, <laughs> yeah. to tell you the truth. <laughs> <laughs> from 10.30 to 11, we... Uh, have the closing newscast of the day, a 30-minute re re report that, again, Ron will talk about later. And from 11 p.m. to 2 a.m., we go again to rock music. Now, there are certain specials during the programming time that I want to talk about. On Monday night, from 11 to 11.30, we have a special program called Guitar Player Magazine Presents that'll look at great guitarists of the world and uh, interview some of them, in addition to hearing their, their music. On Wednesday nights from 11 p.m. to midnight, Oswax Presents, It's the Airwaves. And uh, we have our own person named Oswax. That's all I can say about him. I, I warn you, but I, I also ur urge you to tune in on Wednesday nights from 11 to midnight to hear live original comedy as done by Oswax. Um, he is, by the way, uh, the uh, rejuvenator of the Rutgers University's humor magazine, which is entitled Rut. So uh, we'll be combining elements of uh, the written and verbal uh, uh, humor element here, hopefully. Right. Now, during a broadcast day between 12.15 and 7.30, uh, the classical and Broadway jazz, folk, and soul patrol are all what we feel can be classified as educational programming in that they are being done in a way not only that will entertain, but that will also inform each of the uh, disc jockeys and personalities that are in charge of those programs will be people who know quite a bit about what they're doing and about their, their kind of music, and I think will we'll further your knowledge of it as well as entertain you. In fact, for some people, it might, be, it might be your first exposure to some of these types of music, but it's done in such a general way that I think you'll like it instead of the way, as I remember my junior high school and high school music classes, the teacher had Listen to this, you'll like it, you'll like it. Well, it won't be like that this time. That's what I'm saying. One of the other strong points of this, uh, not only the black programming, but the classical, will be that throughout it will be interviews and features that the disc jockeys, in coordination with other staff personnel of the station, will gather from the local area. The New Brunswick area is rich in a culture that has been pretty well ignored for quite a while. And... Uh, through the use of portable recording equipment, the state of the art has gotten to the point where you can go out in the field and make a recording that is just as good as you hear right now coming from our studios. Now, and when I was with you last week, you also said you'd had some foreign language broadcasting. Right, well, that well, comes in on our weekends. Right, we'll, I, we'll be coming around to that. Ah. But uh, staying in just English, though, we, we intend to, in some way, upgrade <laughs> the playing of pre-recorded discs by bringing into it some of the things that we've produced here in our own studios. And, yeah, uh, I, I think one of the strong points about uh, uh, this type of schedule, and not only that, but uh, even more so, going over this schedule with your potential audience is, uh, is very important in that this must remain flexible. And uh, you know what, what may be applicable to the community at one given point in time, a month later even, may not be. And uh, you know, I think that's one of the things that I would like to stress tonight, the fact that this, 
this uh, schedule is not something that they, that the audience will be hearing uh, at the end of this year or you know or next year. It is it, open to change and it probably will be changed. And one of the ways that uh, we would like to change it is in cooperation with the audience. Uh, if, if the audience doesn't tell us what uh, they would like to hear or those, those services that they would like their community radio station to render unto them, then uh, we really lose our effectiveness as, um, well, in, in the purpose that we've set out to accomplish. And this schedule wasn't just thrown together. It was planned so that at certain parts of the day, when the audience that this program may be aimed at uh, is available to listen to, and that's when we try and present it. If we find through audience feedback via the telephone and uh, the mails that this isn't viable, and of course we're willing to change. Let me go into the uh, weekend schedule because we feel we have a very special weekend schedule. On Saturday morning, we sign on at 9 a.m. We go from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. with ethnic programming, one-hour shows devoted to different sections of our community, different ethnic sections of our community, which um, Anthony will talk about later on. From 1 o'clock to uh, 3 o'clock, the uh, movie and Broadway soundtrack program is on. From 3 to 5 is folk. 5, 5, 5 to 8 o'clock is the uh, Soul Patrol. And Saturday nights, at least for the next 3 or 4, are devoted to our presentations of Rutgers basketball, our live coverage of the games, wherever they may be, either here uh, in the Rutgers gym next door or uh, away. And in fact, we will be broadcasting all Rutgers basketball games and all Rutgers football games next fall live. So you can listen to that on uh, 88.7. After the game, uh, we again have another rock show, and that'll take us to 2 a.m. Sundays. Another special day for us, we open up at 9 a.m. with rock music. From 12 to 3 o'clock is uh, classical music. 3 to 5 is, a, is another special program that uh, we're calling traditional jazz? Traditional jazz, right. yeah. And we have an expert in that who will be doing shows in that. From 5 to 6 is one of the shows that everybody is, is very excited about from the top of the... Uh, Rutgers Student Center over overlooking the beautiful Raritan River. We'll hear the sounds of the big bands of the 1930s and 40s with an expert, Paul Weiss, I believe. Yes, that's his name. And everybody's here excited about hearing that because we've been taping them ahead of time. And during the taping sessions, this station is really bouncing. <laughs> from 6 o'clock to 8 o'clock on Sundays, the Soul Patrol comes on. From 8 to 10.45, Charlie Hutler does a rock show. During that show, from uh, 9 to 10, every Sunday night, we'll be trying to bring you an hour in quad, in quadraphonic sound. Um, and at 11 o'clock, uh, from 10.45 to 11 is a news, and from 11 to 2 is Wonder Wombat, Shaz Hauser, who does a kind of a strange show, but I think one that a lot of people will like. Also on Sunday nights, we'll be bringing you Radio Theater. So that looks at the schedule, and uh, got to give it back to you, Mark. Okay. Um, I realize that that was a lot of information to compress in such a short period of time, but uh, we will be going to some aspects of the schedule in a little greater detail. However, I just remind you that following this program, at 8 o'clock tonight, we will begin our regular programming, which means that Charlie Hutler will have his program following this one. Uh, it is currently 6.30. You're listening to WRSU-FM in New Brunswick. Uh, we'll be back in a little while after some more music uh, to speak, hopefully, in a little greater detail with Dr. Blaustein. should have stayed gone when I left
many times I've left you But I couldn't stay Away too long Thank God For the strength That he gave to me To leave home And still be strong But when I leave This time oh, Lord, To make sure it's understood Time I'm gone for good It's been warm outside But for me But for me there's been no sunshine So
call it stormy Monday But twos is just as bad Call it stormy Monday Twos is just as bad Wednesday's worse uh, Thursday's all so sad Lord have mercy Lord have mercy on me My heart's in misery Crazy about my baby Yes, sent her home to me Some blues this time started out with some uh, easy listening rock and roll, and now we go to some blues. We heard this time "I'm Gone for Good" by the Bobby Blues Band, "The Thrill Is Gone" by the Immortal BB King, and "Stormy Monday" by T Bone Walker. It's 19 minutes before seven o'clock right now, and you are listening to Stereo 88.7 non-commercial radio, WRSU FM in New Brunswick. Um, we were speaking with uh, Dr. Blaustein while those songs were going on, and there were a couple of, uh, of very interesting uh, questions that we think uh, deserve some attention and uh, some answers, I would think. And that is, we were speaking to Dr. Blaustein about what the university really expected from uh, uh, or, or would like to see a student-run radio station, um, if there are any like special services that, that we might provide for the university or programs or anything of that nature. Well, what I'd uh, think you'd want to do for the university is pretty well what you want to do for yourselves. Uh, there are an extraordinary number of things going on in this university which are of general interest to the public of the state of New Jersey. And you now give us an outlet through which we can better serve the people in New Jersey. All the way from educational programming, where a given member of the faculty or a given member of the student body has a particular competence that would be helpful to the people of the state, uh, giving him airtime would advance the purposes of the university and advance the purposes of the station in serving the people of the state. I think also internally to the university, I know you uh, would probably want to include within your programming some programming at least which is of special interest to students within the university. I can see, for instance, before a pe registration period, having the university registrar come up and explain some of the complexities of a new registration schedule or of a new registration system. Or I can see uh, the director of financial aid coming up to explain how some new wrinkle in financial aid is working. We had uh, the introduction of a major new financial aid program last year, for instance, the so-called BOGS program. Well, lots of the students who would have qualified for it simply didn't know it was there. Having the director of financial aid on to the station and giving him time to explain this new program to the student body, I think, would be a distinct service. So we're looking forward to your helping us extend the public service of the university to a broader segment of the people of the state, and also extending your services to the university administration in helping to bring to the student body of the university some information which would make our service to them uh, better than it currently is. Well, in that uh, same respect that we'd like to assist the university, we're hoping that certain aspects of the university will assist us. And uh, we've got an excellent cooperation. Uh, very frankly, uh, you know, a lot of people think that uh, because of the bureaucratic structure of the university that it's very difficult to, uh, to get things done at times. But uh, I must say that if it weren't for the, the excellent amount of cooperation that we as students got from the University administration at large, uh, 
we could not be sitting down here in front of microphones conversing tonight on uh, what will hopefully be a very successful venture. Well, you told me a lot of people helped you, and I was pleased to hear that, Mark. I, I think you made a special note of the physical plant crew that did some of your, uh, helped you in some of the, the new arrangements you needed technically in the studio, isn't that true? Yeah, we've gotten assistance from physical plant. I would have to say, though, that for the most part, uh, the majority of the physical uh, alterations that have gone on within the studio were, were done, done by, by our, our student uh, engineers. But um, uh, talking about uh, that special programming slot that we have every evening from 7.30 to 8.30, we are trying to uh, uh, currently twist our president's arm uh, behind his back and try to bring him here possibly for a half hour, an hour at times. But I thought I'd let uh, Buzz discuss that in a little greater detail with uh, Dr. Blaustein. What I can do is fill the listener in on what's gone down so far, and that is that primary contact has been made, and uh, plans seem to be in the offing for... <laughs> primary, <laughs> secondary, and tertiary. Yeah. <laughs> <He's here>. Okay, <laughs> one, you two, three. You've got all the contact you need. We've, agree okay. I've agreed to come once, uh, what is it? once, once a week. Once a week. And, uh, and so I'm looking forward to it. What I'd like to do, and uh, I think Jose has discussed this with you, is to bring on occasion uh, people either of the university faculty or the university administration or maybe some political figures in the state who have one or another interest in education to come with me on occasion so that the program is more than me. I'd, I'd like to enter dialogue with uh, other people who would be of interest to the listening audience. I hope uh, maybe the governor someday would come down and talk to us. Uh, uh, congressmen who are in the area come in to see me and I could ask them to come in. Uh, I think this way we could extend the kind of educational impact you have to a broader number of people. Also, uh, could, I, could I ask you some questions? What about bringing, uh, say, uh, where there's a current, a, a particular current problem, bringing in faculty who have expertise on that problem and discussing it during your uh, special evening programming? Uh, take a new turn in the question of impeachment. Uh, can you serve a subpoena on a president? Well, there are university faculty members who have expertise in this matter and I think would help the people of the state uh, know what the significance of that particular problem is. That underlines a feeling that I've had that was really the basis for my initial contacts with the university in trying to bring about some sort of programming from the university itself. And that's that there is a lot of information. I think this is a point you brought out before. There's a lot of information within the walls of the university that could be of a lot of use and interest to the general population. Uh, as you said, we have experts here at Rutgers, just here in New Brunswick alone, on areas in economics, in uh, political science, in uh, all things even going down to math and physics. Or, or mm. simple things that are daily life. Now, there's, there are nutritionists at Cook College who regularly talk about nutrition to the people of the state, especially people living on limited budgets. No reason why you couldn't have a nutritionist once a month, once every other month, to talk about certain, some of the current problems of purchasing food on a limited budget. Uh, gardening is a subject that is of extraordinary interest to large numbers of people in the state and we have some of the leading specialists in the nation and the world who could talk about some of the common problems of gardening. I don't know, Ruth Ellen, you had a problem just this evening with our little, <laughs> what did you have now, white fly? Yeah, well, yes, but well, we'd love some help on how, <laughs> love some help on how to, what to do with white fly. Uh, Ruth Ellen thought I would know the answer, but no, like any good wife, she thought a university president should know everything. I don't know anything about white flies. <laughs> the only there are thing. loads of people, and in fact, I would hope someone in the agricultural faculty is listening tonight. <laughs> and might call in and give us some some <laughs> new way to control. I did surgery. <laughs> this this reminds me of something though that this is a student-operated station. And it is a learning experience because we are students and we're here putting in, we, I, I don't think it's been mentioned yet, but none of us here are paid. So all we have to gain out of this station is experience and, and, and an education that you can't get in a classroom, no matter how hard they try. There are certain things in dealing with the outside. That's and one it, of the reasons I'm here tonight, because I so appreciate what you've done in putting this together. And it thrills me. I see. You know, a lot of the seamy sides of student life and a lot of the rough sides and a lot of other things. 
It's thrilling, literally thrilling to me to see you bring off an operation like this, which satisfies you because it's, uh, it fulfills your need to exercise skills you have, but also does such a service to the people of the state. We feel really good for your confidence in us. It's, it's a nice yeah, thing. Seriously, I, I think uh, one, of the, uh, one of the points about this whole conversation is the fact that I think a great many of the potential listening audience probably do not have any kind of direct, a direct access to a, you know, an organization such as this university. Uh, you know, with its uh, uh, academic um, strengths and uh, athletic strengths and things of that nature. And I think what we would like to do is uh, like to become an extension of the university into the greater community that is not usually, uh, does not usually come in contact with Rutgers. It also provides a feedback mechanism the other way for the community to tell Rutgers what is on its mind. Are Rutgers you can... To, are you going to have one of those uh, telephone in programs? We, uh, well, we're, there we're are technical difficulties with that. <laughs> the, the, yes, they are very difficult to do. Uh, it doesn't seem it when you sit and listen to uh, a, a regular station that's been doing this sort of thing for several years. They've got it down pat. We don't have any blueprints to follow. We, none of us here have ever done this before, and we're just plodding along as we go. And uh, we, we've ex you know, done some experimentation with it on our clothes carrier system. We're no, one of the other things I think uh, other purposes you'll serve is to bring knowledge to the people of the state that there are students within the university that are doing something that's fulfilling to them and to the university. There's so many people in the in the state and throughout the nation who have the impression that all students are unhappy with what they're doing. Now indeed some students are and indeed some of them who are have good reason to be unhappy but the fact is that you and lots and lots more like you are finding your work in the university productive and effective, and it's good for people generally to know that. Well, I think that, you know, this whole experience for me anyway has been a, a very exciting one. I know there are a lot of uh, people who are affiliated with this radio station who put in a complete four years at Rutgers uh, working on the, on the plans to get this FM radio station through and having graduated before as you said earlier, it came to fruition, and I think it's, you know, well, I, I'm glad that well, it's a uh, huge, it finally You have come, huge though. skills, and if anyone were in the studio with me as you took me through it the other day, it, you, this obviously is only something you could tell through a longer period of time than I have to tell it, but for people to know all, of you, all that you've done just in technical terms and putting together the equipment in legal terms and putting together the application to get the license for this station, I know that it would cost, uh, it, it has cost many uh, FM stations literally thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars in just legal help to do what you've done without it. I guess this is my media weekend because we also, my wife and I, on Saturday also had, uh, and you won't mind my mentioning a, a local competitor, but we had the good fortune of having, spending some time with Bill Barrett, who took us through the production facilities of Targum, the student newspaper and publishing uh, enterprise, which is operated by and for the students of the university. And there you see another example of a group of students who have done an extraordinary technical job. You, you can't believe I couldn't, looking at the newspaper that comes out daily, uh, what, goes what goes into it in the way of just technical, technical proficiency of a high, high, high order. And it's very comparable to what we see here tonight. Oh, that sounds like very Sounds like a compliment. <laughs> <laughs> I must say, though, that, uh, you know, there's a, a bit of difference in the fact that uh, uh, we have to adjust our um, attitude towards the radio station from something that was formerly a, a, a cash incentive, really, because uh, a lot of aspects of radio are very uh, profit-oriented. But now that we're non-commercial and educational, this entire aspect of radio, you know, we, we must consciously file away and forget about and, and adjust our thinking more along the terms that, well, if, if we are, in fact, seriously and truly interested in radio, then, uh, you know, whether this incentive is here or not, it, we'll still continue to work as hard as we do. And I think that, I mean, just the fact that we're sitting here tonight goes to show that, really. 
I think that I think also that uh, even though the managers are the, are the only ones sitting here, everybody in the station deserves a lot of credit for what they have put into making this station a, a reality. Well, and you I, told and at the me moment, you gave me a fantastic figure. What was it? Two hundred. No, we have like we have that. a staff now of over one hundred ten people. One hundred ten. And. Uh, it's well, a on the average, staff. put in what kinds of hours into the enterprise? Well, 15 or so, I would say, on the average. There are, however, some people who spend along the lines of like 30 <laughs> hours a week here, which well, does Many of the people, of, many of those 100 people are spending 15 hours a week on the work of the station. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, and in here. Well, wow. that's an easy guess. That's well, easy. we're going to have to uh, pause for a minute if you people will excuse me. Uh, in case you've just tuned in, you are listening to the inaugural broadcast of WRSU FM in New Brunswick. It is currently five minutes before seven o'clock, and we're going to take um, a little time with some music going up to the news, which will be at 7 p.m., and uh, it will be about five minutes in duration, and when we get back, we will be discussing in a little greater detail some other aspects of the station. So we'll take that pause now and see you in about five minutes.
You're listening to WRSU FM in New Brunswick. Expected tomorrow on the continuation of the Joanne Chesimard trial. Good evening at 7 o'clock. This is Dave Levine, WRSU News. Superior Court Judge John Bachman is expected to hear a doctor's report tomorrow that Joanne Chesimard is pregnant. Chesimard and Clark Squire are accused in the May 2nd murder of a state trooper on the New Jersey Turnpike in East Brunswick. Bachman is expected to rule tomorrow whether jury selection in the trial is to continue. Although the actual trial will be held in New Brunswick, jury selection was moved to Morristown after it was ruled improbable to pick a fair panel locally. Rutgers College Student Government Association President Tom Sheridan says he is calling for a university-wide referendum on the class calendar. Sheridan says that under his plan, Rutgers students will be able to finish exams before Christmas. We would start school the day after Labor Day. We'd have to get 82 days in. We would finish exams <coughs> by Christmas Eve. We would probably go to school three Saturdays during this time. Sheridan says his plan would mean that Rutgers students would have the same winter vacation as other area schools. Commuters who use the Morris Goodkind Bridge on Route 1 over the Raritan River are urged by the State Department of Transportation to find another route for the next few days. The department says it is expecting heavy delays in both directions due to construction. Traffic will be limited to one lane each northbound and southbound between 9 a.m. and 4 p.m. The Douglas College Government Association is expected to consider a proposal for a university-wide student caucus. The GA will meet tomorrow night. President Gene Fox describes the caucus proposal. The caucus is for informational purposes. Um, so that mainly now it's for the undergraduate colleges that they can get together and give each other information regarding what's going on in their individual college and, and what's going on in the university in general. It's not a, a Rutgers University student government. It's just for informational purposes. Gene Fox, who says the Douglas Government Association will also consider a proposal for a petition drive urging the impeachment of President Nixon. That meeting tomorrow night. In other news, Senate Republican leader Hugh Scott says important diplomatic efforts are underway to end the Arab oil embargo, and he says an end to it looks reasonably in sight. In remarks prepared for the Pittsburgh chapter of the Jewish National Fund, Scott says the oil embargo and consequent petroleum price hikes are hurting the Soviet Union and underdeveloped nations as well as hurting the West. Minnesota Senator Walter Mondale says that a Treasury Department report on 1971 corporate income shows American oil companies used foreign tax credits that year to cut their U.S. bill by more than 75 percent. Mondale says that the report found that the companies reduced their tax bill from $3,200,000,000 to $788 million by subtracting from their U.S. taxes the amount they paid in taxes to foreign governments. And a Lebanese newspaper reports Greece has agreed to free two Arab guerrillas who attacked the Athens airport two years ago in exchange for a promise that Arab leftists will make no more terrorist raids in Greece. That's news. We'll check weather after this. You say that the landlord threw you out of your apartment house because your 400-pound girlfriend broke the toilet bowl when she sat on it? And when you went outside to load up your van discovered that someone had moved in next to a fire hydrant and slashed all four tires during the night and now a policeman's writing out a parking ticket and the mailman has just handed you a letter from the phone company saying that they're gonna sue you for not paying last year's phone bill is that what's troubling you bunky well cast off your troubles and greet the day with a smile because help is on the way 56 places pleased to announce that free legal advice is now available to all Rutgers University students. Every Tuesday evening from 7 to 10 at 56 place, a lawyer will be available to explain the great forces at work against you and how you can escape the legal pitfalls that may await you. Remember, that's Tuesday evenings at 56 Place, 56 College Avenue. For further information, call 56 Place at 247-5555. The current New Brunswick temperature, 57 degrees. The relative humidity, 64%. The barometer falling from 30.02 inches. The forecast fair and mild tonight with lows in the mid-40s to near 50. Increasing cloudiness with rain developing tomorrow. Highs in the mid to upper 50s. And periods of rain tomorrow night. 
Once again, the current temperature, 57 degrees. Next news, the WRSU late evening report at 1045. I'm Dave Levine, WRSU News. Have a good evening. Okay, Dave, thank you very much. It's uh, right now 5 after 7 if you're just tuning in. Good evening. You're listening to the inaugural broadcast of WRSU-FM, the Rutgers University-owned and operated radio station, uh, owned and operated by the students of Rutgers University, that is. Uh, my name is Mark Greenberg. I'm the general manager of this uh, establishment. With me tonight are a few of my managerial associates and um, Dr. and Mrs. Edward J. Blaustein, who uh, is, well, Dr. Blaustein is the president of the university. Um, we were discussing uh, the station, what we plan to do uh, in the near future. We have gone over our schedule very briefly, which will be uh, published in the near future so that it will be easily referred to in the general community. Uh, but right now we're going to turn to uh, a different aspect and a very, very important aspect of uh, our radio station, and that is educational programming. And with that tonight, uh, to discuss that, is the manager of those programs. Anthony Buzz Bizanko. Uh, 